Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include European Commission has the internet in its sights. EU trade chief urges no exclusions in EU-US trade talks. David Samuel Camp writes on the EU costs and benefits, an impossible balancing act. Millions for wind power we can't use. Plus, more wonderful letters from you. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit Nightly News. First up from our homepage. Broadcasting in all media is big business in Europe and broadcasting online is especially growing. Consumer spending on digital video reached 364 million euros in 2011 across Europe, with a market of physical and digital videos amounting to 9.49 billion. So why does my heart sink when it comes to investigation into the future of broadcasting? The short answer is because whenever the EU interferes for the good of the citizens, it's always us, the citizens, who pay. The regulation of the internet is a slow and progressive creep that with each successive step infringes and reduces your freedom. Back in February, I reviewed several articles relating to regulation in different areas of internet and digital media. You can guarantee that with these sums of money at stake, the mainstream media companies will be looking to lobby for hard regulation that puts them at an advantage. Take a look at the music industry, for example. You won't change this, and neither will you stop it whilst the current European governance structure exists. And why? Well, as our articles and essays entitled Brave New Europe demonstrate, the structure of the EU is undemocratic and does nothing to represent its people. Perhaps this sounds like a conspiracy. Well, that's because it is. It's a conspiracy to take away your freedom, your liberty. Now, how could I say such strong words without any evidence? Well, again, I wouldn't, and I couldn't. So go take a look for yourself. Read the Foreign and Commonwealth Office document 301048 in our 1972 et al. section. European Union trade chiefs urged EU members on Thursday not to exclude film and television from EU-US free trade talks, saying that could prompt similar action from the Americans and undermine an eventual deal. France said on Tuesday it had secured the backing of 13 of the EU members in its demand that the audio-visual sector be removed from the negotiating mandate, having threatened in April to block the start of talks. I'll be covering more on the implications of the EU-US free trade agreement in a special article next week entitled NHS Under Attack. Watch this space. In an excellent letter, David Samuel Camps writes, in the article EU Costs and Benefits and Impossible Balancing Act, it says the Deputy Prime Minister has suggested that three million jobs rely directly on our participation in the European single market. The source for this number is not entirely clear, though the number is similar to past estimates of the number of jobs that are directly or indirectly dependent on Britain's trade with the EU. I get really angry when this comes up as politicians never give the quote in full. It comes from a report of a few years ago by the National Institute for Economic and Social Research, NIESR, on the economic outcome if the UK left the EU. It said that three million jobs would be lost, but the net loss over three years would be about 150,000. Most of these jobs would be in the public sector, where there are a considerable number of civil servants engaged on compliance, etc., of EU regs and directives. NIESR's conclusion was that the UK would be no better or worse outside the EU, so politicians are being disingenuous in making that doom-laden prognosis. Well, thanks for your letter, David. We are all in complete agreement, and please do keep your letters coming. We seem to be eking out a series on renewal and low carbon this week. You'd think that there might be some sort of global convention going on, a meeting of senior leaders from across the globe, but I haven't seen anything in the mainstream media. Bilderberg! 
Oh, excuse me. Wind farm operators are being paid millions for wasted electricity under a complex system known as constraint payments. The money is paid out when turbines are spinning, but the electricity they are generating is surplus to requirements. Freedom of information documents reveal that since 2011, more than £26.5 million has been paid out under the scheme. So, once again, the kleptocrats have taken over the asylum. This article will enrage consumers who are facing a £100 surcharge on their utility bills for green energy. More of your letters, and we were delighted to receive this message from Peter Cork. I echo the words of your correspondent, Mrs. Diana Meggie. Yours is truly an interesting and informative site, albeit one that causes a rise in blood pressure. May I suggest it would be helpful to advise your readers when a new law is passed in this country that originated in the EU, so we can see just how much of our lives are being affected by our membership. I give as an example the ridiculous HIP law originated, I believe, in the EU and was introduced here by the last government. Well, hi Peter. We do try as much as possible to show the links between the directives, frameworks and regulations and their implementation into member state law. Probably the clearest and most concise demonstration of how the structures are arranged can be seen in the Foreign and Commonwealth Office document 301048, which is available for download from our 1972 et al. section. Today in our video library, Europe in or out? The debate runs on. This Sky News story looks at both sides of the arguments and asks the question, are the differences of opinion wider across the generations? Is it right for the concepts EU and Europe to be blended together? Are they the same thing? Well, we don't think so. We think that any governmental structure that has at its heart an unelected cabal does not demonstrate a democratic representation of the interests of the people. But what do you think? Write to us and let us know. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the e Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the words section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+. Links to the community page are below.